Hi, it's Jackie from Home by Faith. And today we're going to talk about my favorite plant, the Hoya Carii. I'm going to cover everything uh, from lighting, water, potting soil, humidity, to even propagation. So let's get started. A little bit of intro about my Hoya Carii. I got this plant about three years ago in September of 2017 where I found it in a garden center. Right after I brought it home, I normally, with all the plants that I bring home, I will put them in a different room so that they can quarantine for one to two weeks just in case if there are any pests or bugs that are in the soil or under the leaves that I couldn't see. First thing first. Lighting. My Hoya Carii sits right by my southwest window where it gets a lot of sunlight from about 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock throughout the entire day. So most of the time it's actually direct sunlight as well and you can see just it's shining and it's glowing and it loves it. So I found this out because in the beginning I had my plant in another window, also southwest, but a meter away from the window and it was not getting a lot of direct light. So now that I've moved to right by my window, it's a lot happier. If your house is not that bright or you don't have a south or, or, south or west window, uh, I would encourage you to use a grow light. Uh, it does the same thing, but it, it just you just have to turn it on for I'd say 12 hours uh, minimum a day for it to grow happy and quicker. So number two, watering. So there are two different ways that I water my Hoya Carii. It depends if I'm free or if I need to go out and just leave it be. So the first way is I actually bring the entire plant up into the shower and sit it in the tub, turn on my shower head, Make sure the water is cool or lukewarm or room temperature, just not hot, okay? Because that would damage your plant for sure. So I just shower it top to bottom. And while I'm showering, you, you can also scrub the leaves a little and I'm just making sure all the dust is off and, and give it a nice cleaning. go back and check on my Hoya Carii in about one hour. So when I go back, I would do exactly the same thing again, shower it a little, um, making sure the water is actually going into the pot and not just um, bouncing everywhere. And after a couple times, I'd say I do this three times, three to four times, the entire root ball would be moist, would be wet. And that's when I know I can take it back out of the shower and put it back next to my window. The second way I water my carii is through bottom watering. So what I do is take my entire plant and dunk it into a container that is just a bit larger. And I would pour water into that container so that it fills up maybe more than a half of the, the height of the pot and let it just sit there. So while it's chugging, you'll know that the water level will go down slowly and slowly because what happens during that time is that your soil will start getting moist and dry pockets are slowly drinking up the water and if you see that the water is all gone really quickly maybe in like 10 minutes uh, it's good to just keep adding more water as it needs to drink more water up usually i leave it overnight and in the morning when, when it's done drinking, the water level is no longer going down, I would take this plant out, making sure that everything drains back out, and then I'll put it back into my pretty cash pot. And that's the second way of how I water my Hoya Carii. And on the same note, I also mist my Hoya Carii whenever I remember to, especially in the summer, because in the winter, I actually put a giant plastic bag over it and seal it at the bottom, so that moisture is actually trapped inside. But in the summer, since we have our AC on and I don't have the bag on anymore, I would mist it. Whenever I pass by it, mist it until it's dripping because 
I think their leaves actually like taking in water as well and so it's just like a little spa. Number three, soil. Hoyas are kind of similar to succulents, so they do want to be dried out uh, between watering. So here's the soil mix that I use for my carii. You're going to need 50% regular potting soil that you can find at any garden center. The next step is adding 25% perlite into the soil mix. Perlite are these little white, very fluffy, very light material, and they do not hold water at all. And third, I also add another 25% orchid bark into this because I had it on hand and orchid bark, as you know, it doesn't really hold water either. And as well, it creates these larger air pockets in the soil, so it allows water to drain out quicker. So add all three together, mix it all up, and there you have it. That's what I use for my Hoya Caria. That's also what I use for all my other Hoyas, and they seem to love it. Next up, plant pot. People ask me if I should put my Hoya Caria in a terracotta pot or a plastic pot or ceramic pot. Well, I don't really have a preference because my Hoya Caria is in a plastic pot, and a lot of my other Hoyas are in terracotta pots. So any pot works, but make sure that your pot does have draining holes at the bottom. So in the beginning, I made a trellis out of bamboo sticks because I saw something similar on Pinterest and I loved how it looks. And I would just tie the vines onto the trellis with these uh, green rubber wire that I found at Dollarama. Just be careful when you wrap the vines around the trellis because when you bend the vines a little bit too much, they're very sensitive. Uh, white sap will seep out from the vines. They're not really a problem because I find that the sap just kind of drops one or two drops and they dry out overnight. And after they're dried, you can just kind of peel them off or leave it on the plant, it doesn't matter. So don't be afraid when you see white sap leaking out of your Hoya Caria, it's not really a problem. I've had this plant for three years and I've had to re-trellis it twice. So last year I actually found these bamboo hoops that are very tall and at that time it was way taller than my Hoya and I knew that would last two summers. I think next summer I'm going to have to re-trellis this or even, you know what? cut the vines at the top and propagate them. And on that note, propagation. Propagating a Hoya Caria is very easy. All you need is a little jar and water. If you have rooting hormones, it would work too. Two years ago, through a plant swap, I received a variegated Hoya Caria cutting. That means it was freshly cut, it didn't have any roots, and so when I brought it home, I let the cut end heal and dry out overnight first. The next day, I would dip the ends into the rooting hormones and then I put the entire stem into water. You will start to see roots coming out along the, the entire vine, not just near the notes. And when the roots are about an inch, two inches long, I transfer the entire cutting into soil. I use a clear orchid pot so that I can monitor how well the roots are growing during this time and I found that once it was potted with soil, it grew a lot faster and I can see the roots just wrapping around the pot and it was growing very happy. However, I didn't see any new leaves growing until the next summer. Now a lot of people ask me, how quickly does your Hoya Caria grow? Every summer, my carrier grows at least 10 new leaves. But there's a catch. If it starts blooming, then it will stop growing new leaves, which I really did not like. I hope that you learned a lot about how to care for your Hoya carrier. And if you have any questions at all, please feel free to comment below. I will try my best to answer. And if you want to read more about this, I do have a blog on my website where I wrote about my Hoya Caria since three years ago. I update it every year as I see new changes in, in my plant. I'll leave the link below so that you can check it out. Thanks for watching. Bye!